forming the choke point for shipping routes out of the Gulf of Mexico to the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, Cuba is a strategically significant territory in the Western Hemisphere. Unlike Venezuela that has vast oil and natural gas reserves, the largest Caribbean island has pretty limited natural resources. As such, Cuba is not a particularly interesting geopolitical spot for major world powers, primarily Russia and China, except as an importer of their products. Still, in the era of global exploitation of energy resources, it is a matter of time before Cuban territory comes to the negotiation table in a new redistribution of the world's wealth. I'm your host Kasim and thanks for joining me for another KJ vid. In this video we will discuss Cuba's geopolitical significance. I'd also like to take this opportunity to encourage you to visit our website kjvids.co.uk and sign up to our subscription plan which will give you unlimited access to our content and the full transcripts of all of our video reports and a lot more analysis. During the 1960s, 70s and 80s, Cuba was filled with Soviet products and citizens who worked alongside Cubans in chemical plants, mines and army bases. At the time, the Soviet Union had a spy base outside Havana. It was built in 1963, the year of the Cuban Missile Crisis, but was closed down in 2002. Moscow sent to Havana billions in aid before the fall of the Soviet Union. It is estimated that the breakup of the Soviet Empire caused a disastrous 30% drop in Cuban gross domestic product. The Soviets supplied Cuba with financial and security benefits estimated at around $4 billion in annual subsidies through the 1980s. Since Russia no longer has military presence in the country, its influence in the region declined. In spite of occasional PR stories about Russia's intention to reopen its military bases in Cuba, in reality the Kremlin is not showing any desires to install missiles anywhere near the United States. On the other hand, NATO is on Russian borders now and is massing troops in Poland and in the Baltic states. No major outside power like Russia or China currently has the will or resources to build up a military presence in Cuba and the US has the naval capabilities to control regional waters without physical holdings there. In 1959, following years of guerrilla warfare, Fidel Castro ushered in his Cuban revolution and took control of the country. The US had lost its grip on the Cuban government but held on to its naval base in Guantanamo Bay. America can always stop Cuba from posing a threat by keeping it weak and limiting foreign influence. After the fall of the Soviet Union, Havana lost its main sponsor. Naturally, it had to look for alternatives. In the wake of the Cold War, Cuba's close relationship with Venezuela has provided an important source of petroleum for the politically and economically isolated island. It used to get relatively cheap oil from Venezuela but the main driver of Havana-Caracas alliance is the crisis in Venezuela that has left the island drastically short of crude oil. Trade between the two countries is down 70% since Venezuela's crisis began, according to the Cuban National Statistics Office. In mid-September, Cuban leader Miguel Diaz-Canel announced austerity measures to cope with an acute shortage of fuel. The Cuban government also recently announced it would cut electricity generation by 10%. The country is already experiencing daily power outages that can last multiple hours. It is worth mentioning that Cuba has offshore oil and natural gas reserves in the northern part of the country. The island's natural gas production is estimated at 305 million gallons every year. However, Cuba's oil production currently meets an estimated 40% of its needs. Nearly all the rest has been supplied by Venezuela for years under a barter agreement for Cuban medical services, with some imports from other allies like Algeria and Russia. In 2014, Russian President Vladimir Putin eliminated $32 billion of Cuba's debt left over from the Soviet era. Between 2011 and 2014, many years after the Cold War, four countries wrote Cuba off as a loss. Apart from Russia, Mexico, Japan and China also wrote off a combined $40 billion based on the study by Development Reimagined. That is equal to about 50% of Cuba's current GDP. Some analysts speculate that Russia aims to earn $900 billion by exploiting Cuba's oil. Reportedly, 
the Russian state-owned company Rosneft has already started exploration works on the shelf of Cuba and is going to upgrade a refinery. Forgiving a $32 billion debt may be worth it to push contract negotiations in Russia's favour. Cuba has oil reserves of between 4 billion and 20 billion barrels, though likely in the area of 9 billion barrels. However, it is important to stress that there are limits as to what Russia can offer and to what Cuba currently is willing to do to make itself a more attractive economic partner. Russian-Cuban trade has more than doubled since 2013 to an expected $500 million this year, mostly in Russian exports to Cuba. Still, Russian policymakers as well as Chinese officials are unofficially requesting from Cuba to start economic reforms. Considering that Cuba is a tropical country with fertile soil and that the state controls around 80% of the land, foreign corporations would certainly appreciate Havana to engage into privatization and land reform. Although the US embargo on Cuba has been in place for decades, Washington hasn't objected to Canadian and European trade and business that feed the Cuban economy. According to some experts, in many regards, Cuba is now facing the same challenges that confronted China in the 1970s when the Asian country embarked on its own set of reforms under the guidance of Deng Xiaoping. Nowadays, China is involved in Cuba's economy. Some economists believe that China helps Cuba out of its economic crisis with some subsidies and Cuba provides its archipelago to be its command post in the Americas. However, it is unlikely that Beijing can jeopardize the hugely more important US trade by turning the Caribbean island into a new Cold War outpost. In February 2018, the US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said that Latin America does not need new imperial powers that seek only to benefit their own people. In November 2018, relations between the United States and Cuba took another downward plunge when President Trump's national security advisor John Bolton, lumping Cuba together with Venezuela and Nicaragua, called them a troika of tyranny. In other words, Cuba is seen as another potential target in the hunt for natural resources. It is estimated that Cuba has the third largest cobalt deposits on Earth. The mineral is a key component in making lithium-ion batteries used in electric cars. The mineral is also used in making parts of aircraft engines. The nation is among the 10 highest producers of nickel in the world. The Caribbean nation exports its nickel to China, Venezuela, Canada, the Netherlands and Italy. Over the past 125 years, the United States and Cuba have shifted from close allies to sworn enemies. In spite of Russian and Chinese economic interests in the Caribbean island, Cuba will always fall under the umbrella of US interests. Given the fact that Cuba's resources are relatively modest, Washington will likely postpone the regime change operation in Havana until more important issues in Latin America are resolved. The United States feels no pressure to force immediate change in Cuba and can afford to play a long game. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching another KJ vid. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear your views in the comments below. Please don't forget to visit our website kjvids.co.uk where you can find plenty of more analysis. Thanks for watching again and see you next time.